As we know, it is March, and March is Women's History Month. The reason there is a Women's History Month is because women have had to fight patriarchy, like African Americans have had to fight racism. Imagine trying to fight both. Women, white women, black women, indigenous women, Asian women, Indian women, Muslim women, all the women, Palestinian women, Jewish women, all the women in the rainbow have had to fight for rights to use their God-given abilities and to protect their God-given bodies in this and every patriarchal society on the globe. Like racism is a sin, patriarchy is a sin. It injures, it oppresses, it does harm every day. Lives are lost every day due to patriarchy and due to racism. Imagine if you were dealing with them both. Nevertheless, women all over the globe persist. Women like abolitionist and suffragist Susan B. Anthony, who voted in the presidential election in 1872 when it was illegal for women to vote. Not only did she vote, but once arrested, she refused to pay the $100 fine and became instrumental in the fight for women's suffrage. She died in 1906, 14 years before the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, but because she and others persisted, we have the right to vote and need to always and forever exercise our right to vote in honor of Susan B. Anthony and others who persisted. Women like Rosa Parks, who in December of 1955 refused to give up her seat on the public bus commencing the Montgomery bus boycott, which lasted more than a year until a law was changed and buses were integrated, a courageous move by a, a woman who said no more and ignited a movement that helped change America. It was a dangerous move. Nevertheless, she persisted. Women like Sylvia Rivera, the first trans activist to call for a gay liberation movement inclusive of trans identities. Riviera was instrumental in the inclusion of trans people in the Stonewall Riots of 1969. She was only 15 years old. Nevertheless, she persisted and continued to be a leader and a voice for LGBTQ liberation. Women like Native American environmental activist Winona LaDuke, founder of Honor the Earth, who actively protested against the Sandpiper Pipeline in 2016 and the Dakota Access Pipeline and continues to do the work of environmental justice to protect this land that was stolen from Native Americans. Nevertheless, she persists. Women like Lily Ledbetter, who sued her employer for paying her less, 40% less, than her male counterparts were being paid leading the way for the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act, which President Obama signed into law. Somewhere here, someone here may need to persist and check to see if you're being paid fairly. It is the law. Persist. Women like Senator Elizabeth Warren, who kept speaking while reading a letter written by Coretta Scott King against the confirmation of Jeff Sessions, for the U.S. Attorney General in 2017, Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell actually made this statement in his comments about Senator Warren after the debate, saying Senator Warren was, given a length, was giving excuse me, a lengthy speech. She had appeared to violate the rule, he said. She was warned, he said, and she was given an explanation. And then he said, and he didn't mean for it to go viral, but it did, nevertheless, she persisted. And the list goes on and on. Harriet Tubman, Ida B. Wells, Ruby Bridges, Angela Davis, Sally Ride, Sylvia Rivera, as I said, Justice Joan, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Senator Tammy Duckworth, Congresswoman Ann Omar, Cecil Richards, and the list goes on and on. My mother, your mother, 
And my latest hero, Ruth Godesman, a longtime professor at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the Bronx, who gave her $1 billion inheritance to make tuition free to all students going forward. If you or a woman in your life has had to persist in her life to bring about change, please stand in honor of women persisting and let's give God praise for women who persist. I know I'm not standing alone. If you've had a woman in your life and if you're a man and there was a woman in your life who persisted, we give God thanks. Amen. You can be seated grateful for those resources that I tapped for that history lesson this morning. This phrase stated by Mitch McConnell, nevertheless she persisted, went viral and became a slogan for the feminist movement and are the perfect words to describe what women do when we're told not to do what needs to be done to speak truth to power, to break down barriers, and especially to fight for the rights that should simply be understood as our human rights. We persist, and I never thought I'd thank Mitch McConnell for anything. <laughs> but I thank him for that phrase. Nevertheless, she persisted. I thank him this morning because the phrase perfectly describes the actions of the woman in the text. Listen to how she persisted. Mark 5.25 says, And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I could just touch his clothes, some text says, the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering. And I don't often do pointed sermons, but my first point this morning is we persist because we know when we've been wronged and are deeply aware that better is within reach. Did you hear how she'd been wronged? The text said she suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. This is unfortunately the truth for many women even today. But first, going back in history, and I respect all of the medical doctors in the room, going back in history, the medical field painfully experimented on women, especially black women, to practice medical procedures and to develop medical tools, often without a sedative or without anesthesia. Many of us know, many women in the room, and say amen if you agree, that the tools that are used on women were not designed by women. Yeah. Ooh, I knew I was going to get an amen. <laughs> Ask the women in your lives what we're talking about, men. They'll tell you. So, so I can only imagine, and imagine with me how this woman, truly, as the scripture said, suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. Yet nothing worked. Add to that that the text says she spent all her money, so now she's poor. And in preparation for my part in the Poor People's Campaign, as I just shared, I learned that poverty is the fourth leading cause of death in our country, that 888 people die per day to poverty, and that 100 million Americans struggle with medical debt. This woman was poor now, and, and due to having spent all her money on doctors, I'm sure she was at risk of death. Nevertheless, she persisted. And as we marched across this country yesterday in 32 states, because people know down in our souls when, uh, when, when others and, and we ourselves are being wronged, God put something within all of us to tell us when we have been wrong. 
It's, it's that something that, that tells us that there's been an injustice even against us. And we can usually notice when there's been an injustice against someone else. And my question this morning is, is that something within you awake? Then persist, because when you know you've been wrong, you should also know, like the woman knew, that better is within reach. That's why we persist. We not only know we've been wrong, we know there is better. And it's not too far away, so we persist, and that's what she did. Even though she was poor and her health was worse, she persisted. Verse 27 reads, and when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and, and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. So my second point is actually a question. What have you heard about Jesus? I mean, have you truly heard about Jesus? Have you taken it into your soul, into your spirit as truth? This woman who's in pain, bleeding and poor, persisted through the crowd just to touch his clothes, all based on what she had heard about Jesus. Maybe she had heard about when he came to give good news to the poor. And it resonates now because she's poor. Or maybe she heard how, she, how he healed the man who was paralyzed after his friends dropped him through the roof. And she not, he not only healed him but forgave his sins. Or maybe she heard that he ate with sinners and tax collectors. And, and maybe she heard that he broke the Sabbath law to truly care for people. Whatever it is she heard, it caused her to persist. And what I heard about Jesus causes me to persist because I heard not only what's in the sacred text, but I heard the Lord tell me years ago, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge God and God will make my path straight. That's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I heard the Lord when he said, preach my gospel and if necessary, don't look at their faces just preached. That's in Jeremiah. And I heard the Lord when he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of bondage. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. That's Psalm 81 and 10. And I heard the Lord when he said to me, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. That's Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. And while all of that is in the sacred text, it was also in my sacred personal conversations with God. And they caused me to persist. And so during this season of Lent, are you having sacred personal relationship and conversations with God? And, and if you're not, I encourage you to do so. God will surely speak. And sometimes it will be through scripture and sometimes it will be in your spirit. The woman, poor and in pain, persisted because she had heard about Jesus. And we have the privilege of not only hearing about Jesus, but in having a relationship with the divine and the Holy Spirit, which I believe she had a relationship with divine too. Something told her to persist. We have the privilege, if we're open to it, of hearing directly from the Lord. And when we do, when we have an experience with God, it will cause us to persist in a situation where you know down in your soul that you're being mistreated. Study Jesus and talk to the divine and, and say or even sing these lyrics. This song came to me, and y'all know sometimes I try to sing, but not this morning. But it's an Andre Crouch song that says, we need to hear from you. And you can change that we to I. And say, I need to hear from you. I, Lord, need a word from you. If I don't hear from you, what will I do? Wanting you more each day, show me your perfect way. There is no other way that I can live. And when you hear from the Lord, and you will if you ask, the word says, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. You will have all you need to persist. 
The woman persisted and said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. And verse 29 says, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from suffering. Then Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples, always thinking they had one up on Jesus. Jesus, what you talking about? Don't you see this crowd around you? It's kind of a silly question to ask who touched you when there's people all around you touching you. And Jesus said, no, someone touched me. I know, the Luke version says, that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, verse 33 says, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet because he asked, who touched me? She's got to make a decision whether she's going to speak up or not, testify or not. And trembling with fear, she told him the whole story. And he said to her, daughter, say daughter, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. The text says, while Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus. This is verse 35. It might not be in your bulletin, but it's in your Bible at home. Check it out. When you get there, Jairus, the synagogue leader, someone came from the house and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? My third and final point is our persistence garners power for future generations. My favorite thing about this text, Dr. J, is, is that the story of the woman with the issue of blood is part of a larger narrative of a little 12-year-old girl who was dying. If we look at the verses right before today's text, again, when you get home, start with Mark 5.22. We find that Jairus, a leader of a synagogue, started this whole scene. The text says he came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He had heard about Jesus too. And he pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her and so that she will be healed and lived. And so Jesus went with him to go home to, to touch his daughter. And as Jesus went with him, that's when the woman touches Jesus' robe and, and reaches out and, and touches his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? That's the whole scene. Because he felt power while he was on his way to Jairus' house. He felt power leave him. Another version says he felt virtue leave him. So because the woman persistent, she received power from Jesus and she stood up and told her story. She was not only healed, she had power. And her story blessed Jairus so that when the people told him to give up, your daughter's dead. He had already heard the powerful testimony of the sister who had touched Jesus, the poor woman who stood up and told the whole story about how she, how she had seen so many doctors spend all she had and only got worse, but she heard about a man named Jesus who had healed the sick, who had heard about a man named Jesus who had helped the blind to see, that she had heard about a man named Jesus who did justice against the status quo. And she said, if I can just touch his hymn, I'll be made whole. So she was poor and in pain. Nevertheless, she persisted and ended up with power. If that don't excite y'all, I don't know what will. And her persistence and power was enough to make Jairus the ruler of the synagogue. If you know anything about that culture, he was out of line according to Jewish law and to even come to Jesus, but he was desperate because his baby girl was dying. And he heard this woman's testimony. And then they came and said, she's dead, give it up, Jairus. And Jesus said, only believe. When we persist, it's not just for us. It's for the future generation, generations. And the future it's looking kind of shaky right now, but I can imagine every generation has a moment when they say that. 
And that tells me somebody needs to persist. Somebody here knows they're being mistreated. We know because God put it within us the ability to know when we're being mistreated. Somebody knows that the community is being mistreated. We know because God has opened our eyes and we see and we know injustice when we see it. The word for you today is to persist for yourself and for future generations who will follow you into the same situation. I don't know who I'm talking to, as they say, unless you persist. Study Jesus and see within Jesus the ministry of persistence against wrong. Talk to Jesus. And hear the Holy Spirit affirm you and encourage you to persist. Study the ancestors, women and men who in the face of injustice persisted. Those who don't claim either one of those genders who stood in the face of injustice and harm and persisted. Talk to your pastor, either one of us and Pastor Sarah when she comes back. I know we love strategizing against injustice with the guidance of the Holy Spirit on resisting injustice. And I pray I can help you persist and gain strength from all of that, gain power and healing from the touch of Jesus' garment. And persist for yourself, for somebody else, and for the future. For women, reproductive rights are still in jeopardy. Persist. Voting rights for many are still in jeopardy. Persist. Women are still being underpaid. Persist. Women are suffering domestic abuse. Persist. Young women are experiencing sexual abuse. Men teach young men to stop abusing young women. Men teach young men how to be gentlemen. Persist. Men teach young men how to respect women. Persist. And women, you know what to do. Persist. Teach young women how to respect themselves. Persist. Mentor a young person. Persist. If you're interested in mentoring, see me after service. But we have to pour into people like people poured into us. Some of us have accomplished and we stay isolated, and we leave the next generation behind. If they're not in our house, they're not hearing from us. But I had women who poured into me. A woman named Claudia from my childhood church who just asked my mom, do you mind if I get to connect with your daughter? And she would take me to the Sears Tower and take me to the lakefront and take me places that she knew I was headed back to west suburbs to Maywood, and she wondered about pouring into me, and so she took the opportunity to do so. She persisted, and because of her and so many others, black, white, men, and women, I persist. Women and men and all persist through voting. Men still lead in almost every so-called democracy in the world. Think about that. And certainly as dictators around the globe. Persist. That's the greatest sign of patriarchy that exists. And it's time to persist. And as people of God, when we come to see mistreatment and injustice towards any of God's creation, we are called to persist. So women persist. Men persist. LGBTQIA persist. Young people persist for our persistence garners power for ourselves and especially for future generations who need us to persist. So nevertheless, persist. God bless you.